Hello, I'm Brent Ferris of Bearded Man Studios, and I wanted to go over network instantiation so you can actually create objects uh, on, on, in your networked game at runtime, and you can also buffer them so others can see them. In this video, we'll just go over the buffered ones, and in a later video, I'll go about real-time ones. They work basically the same way. So what I'm going to do is, in my scene that I'm going to be doing this in, I'm going to drop in a networked manager. And for now, the network manager is required for instantiation. Um, uh, we're working on a system of getting away from the network manager and being able to instantiate without it. So I'm going to grab this cube, which has a it, it has a script that derives from the network manager on it. And I'm just going to make a prefabs folder so I can store it. And I'll store this cube in here. There we go. And now I can delete it from my scene, and inside the network manager, I can drop it in to that list. So I'm going to make a script that I'm going to stick on, I guess, the main camera here. I'll get rid of this old script there. So I'm going to make a script that I'm going to drop on the main camera to instantiate my player. So I'm going to say create player, select my camera, drop my create player onto it, and then we will begin the coding on this. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all uh, right when I start I'm going to check if I'm connected so I'm going to be using beardedmanstudios.network I'm going to be doing a private void start this is not deriving from simple networked mod behavior or network mod behavior it's just a basic script so on start I'm going to do networking dot primary socket dot connected uh, so I'm going to say if primary socket connected and if you don't know what primary socket is we'll be uh, I'll have another video tutorial going uh, over what primary socket is this is new in beta version 2 even though we just released beta version 3 uh, because networking allows you to actually create a lot of multiple sockets through that class so a primary socket would be kind of your main communication socket that you're using so if the primary socket is connected we're going to just create the player so I'm going to make a function private void uh, create player so I will call create player here else if we are not connected we're going to listen to when we connect so I can say networking dot primary socket dot connected this is the lowercase c for the event plus equals and then I'll drop create player as the event action to execute so to instantiate across the network, I'm going to say networking dot instantiate or uh, instantiate if I can spell. There we go. And it wants a game object, but we don't really need to supply a game object if we don't have a reference here. I can actually use the name of the object, which is cube here. So I can use cube. Next, it wants to know the receivers. Since I'm going to be spawning this on the network and it's going to act as my player I'm gonna use all buffered so this is all I have to do to instantiate so networking dot instantiate cube all receivers instantiate has a lot of overloads so there's four overloads and I can set the position the rotation uh, and I can use strings or game objects so you can use the one that's appropriate for you this one's just gonna spawn it wherever the key wherever the prefab was stored uh, in the scene so I gotta close that to save it for some reason. There we go. A nice bug. Uh, what did I? Oh, it's named the same as the class. Uh, I'll call it uh, Make Player, and just replace that here and here. All right. So now I have everything to instantiate my player. I can give it a try. So I'm gonna go to Menu. I'll save my scene out, and I'll press Play and I'll just start a server by myself and you can see the cube was instantiated if we select the cube and go into the settings up here and go to debug and we scroll down we will see that uh, the is owner is checked so I own this cube as the server and it has its unique identifier there as well if you're curious about that that is a public getter private setter so now that we have this let's see if it works across the network I'm gonna to go to my build settings I'm gonna build and run So, there we go. 
now that it's built and run, I'm going to run it over here, snap this to my left, and I'm going to play as the server over here. So start the server, and then I'm going to start the client here. Now you'll notice that it's the, our cubes are overlapping, but we do have two cubes in here. Let me just move this guy out of the way. So we have two cubes in the scene. If I select this cube, which is the server one, I can go to debug, and uh, I can see that is owner is true. And if I select the other one, I'll see is owner is false because it's owned by this client. Now, something else that's cool that you may not have noticed unless you watch the other tutorials is that this move cube script that's attached to that object actually only moves a cube that is owned by the person that is pressing the keys. So when the server, when I as the server press up or down, I rotate this cube and move it. Uh, since that is owner is set, only the server can move only the cube that it owns, whereas the player is the one that can move the cube that it owns. So uh, that's a quick tutorial on how to get buffered instantiation so that you can get your player spawning and uh, visible to the network. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, until next time, I'll talk to you later.